Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel, Developing as Dr. K. So today I'm gonna be telling you guys about surviving grad school. And I feel like a lot of times when you hear people talk about grad school, it's always like some kind of weight on them. Like I'm surviving, I'm making it, I'm getting through, something like that, right? Like it's always, some type of struggle. And a lot of people don't understand why. Well, I'm not gonna get into why right now. If you want to, you can watch one of my other videos, which I'll link up above in the cards about kind of some of the struggles that I have been having, but I'll do another video on that later. Um, but today I'm just gonna tell you guys my survival tactics, the things that I do to help me survive graduate school. Let's get into it. So survival tactic number one is planning. You have to plan in grad school like nobody's business. I plan what I'm gonna do that day. I plan what I'm gonna do for the week. I plan what I wanna achieve for the semester, what I wanna achieve for the year. And I change my plan for my whole trajectory every single year. You have to plan a bit more than you're probably gonna be used to because Graduate school is a little different from undergrad in the respect that your time is governed by you. Um, the you You're taking a lot less classes. I don't know how many classes I took in undergrad, but they were somewhere between five and six a semester. Some graduate programs, you only have to take five to eight classes. You have a lot more free time and you're kind of at a different stage in your life, right? Like you're you have probably moved into your first big girl or big boy apartment. Um, a lot of people have already had their first big boy or big girl job, or some people just, you know, went directly in, but they, they've graduated. You know, they've lived through the really weird part of your 20s where you're coming from under being told what to do, and now you're an adult, you're a real adult. Uh, and you're expected to do real adult things, right? Getting a PhD is a really big kind of goal. So breaking it down and planning really helps me to, you know, bite it, take it one bite at a time and, you know, step by step, take it step by step and do it at my own kind of rhythm with my own kind of pace. And it also helps that I let my advisor know about my plans, right? Because He's then able to tell me like, okay, I think we can achieve these things. Let's see what's before us so that we're on the same page. Because whenever you and your advisor are not on the same page, weird things happen. We want to plan, but we also want to execute. And in order to execute, sometimes we just need to take a break. I'm a person who can do things like go really deep, super fast for a short period of time. And then after that, I need to get out of there. Um, so I can, you know, I can grind, grind, grind all night, all day for about one or two days. And then after that, I can't do anything else. Like I'm done. If I put the computer down, it's over with. I'm not picking it back up for another couple of days and then I'll go deep again. So I grind for those few days and then I take, a few days break. Now, is that the best approach? Mm, I don't think so, but that's just what I do. So I'm gonna work on expanding my break outlook and figuring out how it's best for me to take breaks and schedule meetings and things. One thing that some people suggest is that you work for an hour, take a 30 minute break. Some other people suggest working for 20 minutes, take a five minute break another 20 minutes, five minute break, another 20 minutes, 10 minute break, and then it starts over, right? I think that works for a lot of people, but it doesn't work for me because I don't like, I don't like changes that fast. I have to be in something and then take a break and then be in it again and take a break. So you have to figure out what works for you and notice that if it's not working, that you have to pivot. So speaking of pivoting, that leads me to my next point. Things change 
You know, in grad school, nothing is set in stone. So things change a lot. Being agile, being able to deal with change. One of the ways I do that is by really assessing a situation and seeing when the benefits outweigh the bad, um, going back to my plan, seeing if something fits in, um, asking other people, my mentors about how I can best pivot, things that I should change. Um, I take a step back and really look at the scenario and try to understand what's going on, which brings me to my next tip. <laughs> See, everything is connected, but it brings me to my next tip, which is having a support system. I have so many mentors who are just really brilliant and great organized people. And it makes all the difference when you guys have similar ideas, similar beliefs, similar understandings of how the world works, right? And also having a couple of mentors, and I, I do mean just a few, who, who think differently than you do about how the world works. Um, because you don't know everything and no one person knows everything, right? So it's good to have some people that do have different perspectives on some areas of your life, right? They might be connected in a way that you might can leverage or they might tell you something that you need to hear that you haven't thought of. You have to really work on building your support system. My support system consists of my parents, my friends, uh, my church community, my mentors, my um, graduate school um, buddies, my advisor. Like for me, it's friends who are in graduate school and friends who are outside of graduate school because sometimes you just need a break, right? Sometimes I wanna talk to people who are not in graduate school about things that don't deal with graduate school. <laughs> so it's nice to have that separation and that break sometimes. Biggest piece of my support system is Jesus. Honestly, like being able to go talk to God about things that are going on is very helpful. I always receive the knowledge that I need about a situation when I need it, not necessarily when I ask for it, which is, you know, frustrating at times, but it's, it's good to know that it's on the way and that the answer is coming. Being connected to my body of faith, going to church and, you know, connecting with church members, talking to them about faith and about beliefs and things like that has been super important for me. I have someone to be able to speak life into your situation and not just motivation, right? Like, it's nice to have mentors speak motivation, but it's different when they can speak life into you, right? From your faith point of view. Um, so when I have people doing that, um, it just really opens opens up everything, right? So staying connected to my body of faith has really helped me survive in general. Another survival thing for me is eating. I cannot tell you how much eating and eating good food will change just everything. I'm able to go throughout the day and do things, right? And when I'm not, then it really puts a hammer on things. So eating well and eating full meals, it's just, it's great. It literally helps me survive physically and mentally, emotionally. Sometimes when you have a good meal, it just warms your heart. People are food insecure while they're in graduate school, which is a huge issue. There are several food banks that you can go to for food. There's also a lot of churches that in um, by other bodies of faith that will support you and help you if you go to them. Uh, there, there's also um, governmental assistance that you can get on as a graduate student. So check with your school and find out what those resources are. Go to the student offices, the financial aid office, everyone. Go to all the offices on your campus that work with students to try and figure out what those things are. Uh, something that has helped me a lot with surviving graduate school is leaving behind a lot of the things to fit into society better. For example, code switching. 
I don't code switch anymore. I no longer make effort when I see a person of another race to try and make my voice sound a certain kind of way. You're gonna get how it is. I'm not gonna change the way that I wanna wear my hair today because you have a problem when I change my hair. I don't do those things anymore because I wanna be comfortable. There are times where, you know, where I change my hair up three times a week, you know, and people are like, wait, what happened? And I have the right to do that, you know? So I think it's been very beneficial and very helpful for me because it's helped me to not focus so much on things that I can't control. You cannot control how people view you. The only thing that you can do is show up as your best self and call it a day. And when people aren't okay with that, sometimes you just have to be willing to walk away from something. I'm not saying go and quit all your jobs. I'm not saying, you know, because there's no perfect place and there is always gonna be someone who looks down on you for something and you can't control that. But what you can do is have conversations. If you still feel that you're being unheard and it's a place where you feel that you can no longer survive or no longer thrive, then it might just be time for you to look at other options. Um, another thing that has really helped me with surviving grad school is pursuing my own goals and projects out that don't have anything to do with school necessarily, right? So I volunteer a lot with different organizations and you know different groups. I really enjoy and love volunteering. I love working with kids and working with people who are in college, you know, things like that. So separating doing things that separate myself from from graduate school and still pursuing my goals and dreams outside of graduate school has really helped me to to just, you know, come back every day. I really realized that during um, shutdown times and COVID times, you know, like the thing that keeps me coming back to work is the fact that I can do things outside of work. Another thing that has really helped me survive graduate school is making some sacrifices for things that I want and that I feel like I need that are important and essential to me. For example, I go and get monthly massages now. And I wasn't doing it before because I'm like, oh, that's a rich people thing. You know, I don't have the money to do that. I can't be doing all that. I'm in grad school. I need to save my money. And I live off campus. Why? Because I need uh, separation, right? I So it's okay to make some purchases um, that may seem like luxury things for you. Just because you're in graduate school doesn't mean you always have to deny, 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 right? Um, and you can get fellowships too. Apply to fellowships that will help you to do get things for yourself that are going to help you survive. Now, a book that I have been reading is this one. Sorry, it's kind of bright outside right now. Um, but this is Hooded, um, A Black Girl's Guide to the PhD. I highly recommend getting it. Um, just been talking about a black woman's experience um throughout her phd journey and there's a lot of things in this book that i relate to um you don't have to be a black woman to get it there are you know if you're a minority in general and you're in grad school i really think that this book is going to be super helpful for you i'm not sponsored i bought this with my own money um the author probably doesn't even know i have this book right so uh i'm really telling you from experience that you know i i have been enjoying it i'm about halfway through it's a very short read i may feature another book like in a another video whenever i talk about things but good luck on surviving graduate school if you made it this far in the video you might as well like the video in fact you might as well comment down below and i don't see why you would subscribe just go ahead and do all those things um and i'll see you in the next video